Well, good evening. It's Sunday. It's five o'clock. That means it's time for the Bible study hour. And I am so glad that you have joined with us tonight. And I trust as we spend the next hour together, that together we will uh, be blessed, together we will grow, together we will learn. So before we go any farther, though, let's pray, shall we? Father, we are thankful tonight for this privilege we do have to come back together again and to open your word and to study it together. We pray that as we do so tonight, that you would guide and direct us. May your word be our teacher. May your word be our guide. As we say always, what does the book say? And so uh, just may your spirit truly work in our hearts and minds tonight. And we pray for that one who may be watching tonight, may tune in later sometime, that if they don't know Christ before this broadcast is over, that they will have made that decision to trust in your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So bless now our time together, and we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And it is a blessing to be with you tonight. And uh, we had a great day here. Today was our last day here at North Branch, Missouri, <laughs> Missouri, Minnesota, uh, and uh, that people had a sort of a going away for us today that we kind of ruined for them. Um, they had cake, and they had a dinner, and, uh, and everything, and then we told them that we're coming back. And uh, so it has been arranged through Bible doctrines in the church here that we are going to come back, and uh, I have my Bible doctrines office right here. I'm sitting at the desk of my Bible doctrines office here in Min North Branch, Minnesota, <clears throat> and I'm going to carry on the work with Bible doctrines. Just uh, Saturday, I finished the latest Truth of Flame, sent that in, and you should be getting that in a couple weeks, I guess. Working on some other things here, working on Miss Susan's Bible Buddies. We've recorded four of those here uh, in the last few weeks. And so we will continue on here. But they are also getting, uh, at least there's a candidate coming, a uh, young guy, and uh, to uh, perhaps become their pastor. And uh, so it's been arranged that we will stay here for several months, I've given them up to around six or so um, months to sort of continue on here doing what we've been doing, but at the same time serve as a mentor if that young man should come. So uh, you could just pray for us here. Uh, as I said, this is our last Sunday here. Uh, when we're done here tonight, we'll pack up some things. Tomorrow, we'll pack up everything we need to pack up in the trailer, and uh, we'll be heading out from here. Uh, but we will, we do plan to be back here by the end of October or the first part of November. So you can pray for us over that uh, next uh, several weeks as we are away. But uh, we've had a wonderful time here today, a great time here today in the Word, uh, both teaching in the Bible time, the Sunday service, and then in the adult Sunday school class that uh, follows. So, all right, let's get over here and get these other things uh, headed out and going, and uh, then we will move on. And I will tell you this, when I came into the studio, my office tonight, the curtain behind me was on the floor, and uh, one of the hooks that held it up had come off. They're just taped to the wall. So if the curtain falls... <laughs> during the service, don't be alarmed. The building isn't caving in. So anyway, anyway, uh, don't forget all of our materials. I, I'd like to get, get away from doing this, but don't forget all of our materials, uh, our Bible study materials, our, our, our uh, gospel tracks, uh, and our graded curriculum. All of that uh, is there, all of it, as we, as we say all the time, and we emphasize it. And, and I'll tell you right now, I'm not embarrassed by the, the Apostle Paul. I'm not embarrassed by mid-Acts dispensational theology. I'm not embarrassed by preaching mid-Acts dispensational theology. I'm not embarrassed or ashamed of boldly standing for um, right, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
Um, some people may be saying, you know, oh, oh that's good. we did far more than that. You can't understand the Word of God without that. And I don't care where you go in the Word of God to preach. Unless you do it wrongly, uh, rightly divided, you're wrongly dividing. And, and you're, you may be teaching something that doesn't apply. Uh, so I, I believe that we need to know it, stand for it, preach it. And I know there are people who say, it does not belong in the pulpit. Well, but if you don't teach it in the pulpit, where are you going to teach it? In the Sunday school class. You mean the one no one comes to? Um, you know, people, what we found when we came here, what we, came, what we found when we came here, we found people who wanted to study and people who wanted to get it in the pulpit and get it in the Sunday school class and get it in the Wednesday afternoon Bible study and the Friday morning men's Bible study and the every other Thursday women's Bible study and, and, and these small groups on Thursday night. They wanted it. Don't let anybody tell you, if you're in a church where people don't want it, you better go back and teach evangelism or, or the gospel because you've got a problem. Um, so anyway, uh, I am not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the grace of God, nor am I ashamed of the Apostle Paul, which he says in 1 Timothy. But anyway, um, where was I? Uh, our, our Bible study materials, our gospel tracts, our graded curriculum, and of course we have a catalog that is available to you. If you would like one of those, All everything that we have to offer is in that catalog. All you need is call that number, 616-785-3618, and uh, we'll, they'll get that to you right away. And uh, you can go to our website at BibleDoctrines.org, or you can go and get, send us an email and ask for a catalog, ask a question, whatever, at staff at BibleDoctrines.org. And yes, I get those up here as well. well I am in full contact with the office on my computer here. So everything that happens there, I know it's happening here. So, all right, don't forget, Tuesday night, Tuesday Bible time, 7 o'clock, continuing our unfolding the drama of God's uh, truth, God's word. And um, we will be here for that, although we won't be here. We're going to be someplace else Tuesday evening. We don't know where that will be. I know that we'll be sitting in our trailer, and it'll be on my phone, but we will be here for you Tuesday night at 7 o'clock uh, for that. Don't forget Monday through Thursday, morning coffee with a bite of scripture. I believe I'll be here tomorrow morning for that. And uh, so uh, tune in then uh, for that. And then also uh, Miss Susan's Bible Buddies. Um, look at that slide. I thought there was a slide like that. I should have looked. Because I've got another slide coming up right here. Miss Susan's Bible Buddies. We are happy to announce that September 9th at 4 o'clock, Season 3, Episode 1, will take to the air. And um, Susan's in there, and I believe, I believe Sammy makes a special appearance. A satellite appearance. A satellite appearance in that. Anyway, uh, that's coming up. So that is a week from tomorrow. Miss Susan's Bible Buddies will be back. The first week, the lesson is on Deborah and Barak, or might say Barack. Barak, Deborah and Barak, as she continues going through chronological, chronologically the Old Testament. So do keep that in mind. Uh, so a week from next Sunday, we will begin our RV tour and Bible conference. Uh, no, a week from today. Mm. Yeah, a week from today. Uh, September 8th through the 13th, we will be in Branson, Missouri uh, for a, a great week. We always have a great time, a lot of fun, but we also have a great time in the Word of God. And, you know, I, it's not too late to come and get a hotel room there for the week, uh, or bring your camper, maybe, maybe but um, take, take part in the Bible study at night. But uh, we have a great time, and so we're looking forward to that. And uh, <clears throat> so if you'd like to come, let us know, and you can call that number and say, we are coming, Keep us, count us in. And uh, 
we can do that. And we try to get you tickets for Esther. We're going to see Esther on uh, Wednesday evening. So uh, afternoon. afternoon, rather, yes. So my, 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 my book scheduler is right there, so that is Kerr. But yes, so if you'd like to come, and it's not too late to stay in a hotel, I know that, uh, and then be part of the conference, we'd love to have you. Love to have you. So keep that in mind. And uh, I think that's, yep, well, I don't know what that is. Oh, that's what used to be there. He's taken out of there. So anyway. Um, I don't know that Grace Bible Fellowship from North Carolina. Could that be how? North Bible. No, that's Dave and Sylvia. So before we go any further, let me scroll back up here and say hello to some folks. Mike and Cindy Fitzpatrick, of course, according to my, my records here, they are the grand prize winners tonight. They get the gold medal. Uh, Roger Newell from Valrico, Florida is here. He's got in at the bronze or the uh, silver medal. And Bob and Kitty Smith split the bronze medal here from Muskegon, Michigan. Uh, there's Cheryl Calabretto, also checking in from Carter Lake, Iowa. Uh, just short of the bronze medal, Cheryl, just short. Uh, Arlen and Ruth Sorley, now they are in some place in Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, Tahlequah or something. Tahlequah? Tahlequah, Oklahoma. And I know where they're going. They're on their way to Branson. And uh, so uh, we will see them next Sunday. And looking forward to meeting them again. Uh, always have a good time when we're together. And so we're looking forward to that. Dwight and Debbie Johnson checking in from Worthing, South Dakota. And we'll see them. They are also coming to the conference next week. So we'll see them. Wes and Betsy Appleyard from Altoona, Pennsylvania. Now, they're not coming to the conference. And I'd like to know why. Uh, they need to be there. But it's nice to have Wes and Betsy with us. Bill Calabretto sh shows up, and Bill and Cheryl will be at the conference. So we will see them. Uh, I would suggest Bill start out right away so the traffic doesn't stop him too much. Uh, but uh, Bill Calabretto and Cheryl, they're here. Linda Beckman, um, also from Carter Lake, Iowa. It's nice to have Linda here. I don't think I've seen her name for a while. So it's nice to have Linda back with us. Neil and Diana Schnoth. Of course, from Holstein, Missouri, and uh, we will be going to their house. We'll see you Wednesday, uh, and uh, and then heading down to a next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll be speaking at a retreat at their church, Neil and Diana's church in St. Louis. Uh, a weekend retreat talking about love and marriage and and things like that. Um, so I guess being married for 50 years, you're an expert. Yeah. Okay, so I'll be, I'll be speaking there next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Then Sunday after church, Sunday morning, Neil and us will head down to Branson to get set up for the conference there. Audrey Snow, good to be back in church. Praise the Lord for that. Audrey's been battling skin cancer and treatments and hasn't been feeling well because of that. But uh, it was good to be back in church today. And I say praise the Lord for that. Audrey, I don't say her last name. Uh, no, but Audrey, I used to call her Audrey Warm. Um, but uh, it's nice to have Audrey with us. And it's, I'm thankful to hear that you are back in church today. B. Newton from um, Nuego, Michigan. And it's nice to have B with us. And I trust that the eye shot Shots went well for you on uh, Thursday, I believe it was. Uh, Judy says, we'll continue to hold you both up in prayer as God's leading and direction, and I appreciate that, uh, Judy. Judy from Hollidaysburg, PA. Pastor Brent and Sandra Biller are here from Short Gap, uh, West Virginia, and uh, Ridgely, West Virginia. So we're Glad to have them here. Grace Bible Fellowship from Pink Hill, North Carolina. Dave and Sylvia. Pam Scudder from Ravenna, Michigan. And it's nice to have uh, Pam with us tonight. Susan Ostrowski from Chicago, Illinois. And uh, watching with her brother, John Codley and 
And it's nice to have all of you with us tonight. And we're going to go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And uh, we've been looking at uh, chapter 3 for a while. Uh, we were with somebody not too long ago, and they were talking about their pastors took, um, took a, week, a week to preach through the book of Ephesians, was it? The first chapter. He did it in one day. <laughs> <clears throat> Just one hour, and probably just 40 minutes. Uh, he did the whole chapter of Ephesians 1, the whole, yeah, Ephesians chapter 1 in 40 minutes. And uh, I said, shame on that guy. Um, anyway, we've been here in Colossians chapter 3. And in Colossians chapter 3, we've been looking at these idea of putting off, putting on, mortifying, and uh, again, the, the key to all of this is whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by or through him, through Jesus Christ. And, and all of this is the result of doing what, what the Apostle Paul is outlining here in this chapter uh, for us to do, how we are to live, how we are to conduct ourselves. It's all right here. And, and this isn't, and I, 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 I don't want to stretch this out, but this is not legalism. Paul isn't, isn't putting off and putting on and more mortifying here so that we have uh, a better standing before God, so that we can be more com made more complete in Christ, so that we can enhance our, our salvation. We can have a stronger uh, salvation, a stronger thing. Uh, we can be more saved than that, or we can even stay saved. Paul's given this by the Holy Spirit. Now, if you want to call Paul a legalist, then you call the Holy Spirit a legalist. Or you call God a legalist who breathed out these instructions. These are not the instructions of Paul. These are the words of God given to Paul and put down on paper by Paul, but these are the words of God. And, and this is what God is giving to us as a way of bringing our lives, bringing our lives, first of all, in conformity to his will for us, his desire for us, and, and, and his desire for us that we in turn may be a better testimony into the community. Over in Ephesians, he tells them not to walk as the Gentiles walk or, or as the heathen walk. Uh, we are to be different. We are to come out from them. We're to be different from them. And the world is to see something that's different in us. And unfortunately, and, and we're all included in that, unfortunately, there are times when that's not true in our lives that we are more conformed to this world than the Lord would want us to be. And I'm sure that when that happens, I'm sure that as Ephesians 4 speaks of, I think at that time we grieve the Holy Spirit simply because we're not doing what he asks us to do. And, and so we bring shame to, to the Lord. We bring shame to the gospel. And, and I know I've said it here. I've said it many times over the years um, people talk about the church being full of hypocrites. I'm not going there. You're just a bunch of hypocrites. And, and the people in the church get all offended by that. Well, that's not true. That's not true. And I said, they call us hypocrites because that's exactly what we are. We are hypocrites because they, they see one thing and then they see another. And, and uh, so uh, they see our Sunday suit and they see our Monday suit. And our Sunday suit and our Monday suit are not always the same suit. And uh, they listen to us, they hear us, they watch us, and it doesn't match up. It doesn't match up. So we're, we're, we're here, and he says, whatsoever, whatever you do, whether it's in word, speech, or, or in deed, action, whatever you do, in speech or deed or action, do all 
do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And again, can we do all these things that we do in the name of the Lord Jesus? And then giving thanks to God the Father um, through the Son for that action. To, to watch that thing we shouldn't watch or that joke we listen, shouldn't listen to or the, the words we use that we shouldn't be using and, and just all of that. You know, can I give praise and honor to the Father for the privilege of doing this? And if we can't, then we ought not do it. And, and I'll tell you, and we slip, we fall, we do it, and we grieve the Holy Spirit and I think in times such as that, we owe the Lord an apology. And we ought to say, I'm, th I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I've disappointed you. I've grieved you. Um, I, 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 I'm sorry for that. I, with your help and your strength, I, I won't do it again. But that, and so then he comes down to the wives, the husbands, and the children as we've been talking about. And then, you know, we already had the husbands, but then we come down to the fathers. To the fathers. And in, in, in verse 21, it says, Fathers, provoke not your children. Provoke not your children. Now, you notice the two words, to anger, are italicized. That means they're not in the original manuscript. Um, but... If you look over at Ephesians, uh, you'll find, look at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, here it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. And the word wrath is not italicized. It is in, it is in the original. And, and so the, the, the translator, translators in Colossians just Borrowed this. It's the same idea. It's the same thought, and and they inserted it here as as a way to finish the sentence or the phrase. Provoke not your children. And that word provoke uh, in Colossians chapter three. That word provoke uh, has the idea of stirring up, um, of uh, stirring up or causing this wrath or this anger to well up in your children, lest they be discouraged. Now, we don't need to spend a lot of time here. We could spend, we could spend a whole hour here, just, just here alone. First of all, this is not, this is not speaking of just discipline. This is not saying don't discipline your children. Um, the responsibility of discipline belongs, actually belongs primarily to the father. Uh, that's part of his leadership. That's part of his headship. Now that doesn't say a mother can't administer discipline. But I would, I would argue this, that whatever discipline a mother gives ought to be in accord to what has been decided with, by the father or with the father in mind is this is, the, this is the style of discipline that we are going to give. And so when the wife gives discipline, it's within that framework. Uh, so that the father and the mother are basically on the same page. Um, you, can't have, you can't have the father and mother on two different pages going in two different directions because I'll tell you what, it takes the kids about three seconds to figure that out. And they're going to play the one against the other. And, and uh, the father and the mother need to be on the same page. Now, that could all grow out of the fact that the husband and the wife are to cleave to one another, and they are to labor together as one flesh. Uh, now, the husband is, is the head, 
But at the same time, they, they are one flesh in this family. And being one flesh in that family, they need to be laboring together in all areas of the family. They need to be on the same page. Not functioning in two different directions, going, going two, different, two different ways. That, that brings nothing but confusion uh, into the household. So, so, that, so while it's talking about fathers here, provoke not your children to anger or to wrath, uh, it, it's, it's the, the husband and the wife that the same thing would be say, said of the, of the wife, although we're talking about the fathers as the head of the, of the home, the head of the arrangement. And so it falls back to him. And he says, provoke. Fathers, provoke not. Don't, don't stir your children to wrath. Don't push them uh, into the area of wrath. And like I said, that does not mean that we don't discipline. That does not mean... I think, I think discipline uh, really... Is, is, a, is a biblical concept that God gave uh, from the very beginning of time. And, and you see it carried out uh, throughout time. Uh, look, look at the book of Proverbs. And I say, well, that's Old Testament. Well, yeah, it is. But, the, but Paul says these things were learned for, or given to us for our learning. And maybe we can go back here and learn a little bit of discipline um, here. Proverbs chapter 23 uh, in verse 13, it says, withhold not correction. Withhold not correction from the child. Uh, for if thou uh, beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. Now, let's stop and let's, let's take a minute here. And, and first of all, withhold not correction. Well, correction is discipline. Uh, correction is chastisement. Uh, correction. Uh, don't withhold it from the child. And, and that word child here talks about someone who is from, a, from toddler age all the way up. Adolescence. Teen years. There, there's no, this is not a word that is limited to three-year-olds. This, is wor this goes all the way up. All the way up, um, and, and I, to me, can I be honest with you about something here? I think one of the biggest problems we have in the house today, in the home today, with the postmodern parent, maybe even a little before the postmodern parent, um, we have too many grandparents today who are were the hippies of the '60s, the '70s. That's where I was. Grew up in the 60s. Um, and in the 60s, the age of, if it feels good, do it. The age of the hippies, the age of Woodstock, the age of, you know, all those kinds of things. And unfortunately, the people who grew up in the 60s and were the hippies and the anti-establishment people, do you know what they're doing today? <laughs> they sit in Congress. They, they're our president. They're, you know, they're the people in charge. And then we wonder what's, went, what's gone wrong. All they did was cut their hair and put on a suit. Um, but, but we have those people in charge. And parents today, now the, the children of them, and now the children, a, a generation removed, the, the, the postmodern parent doesn't want to be a parent. They have children. But very often, those children are just playmates. They're just having playmates. They have babies, and they're fun to play with, and they're fun to ooh and ah and, and all of that. And then they start having kids, and they're fun to chase around the house. And, oh, looky at this. And then they're, they're fun to play video games with. And parents today don't want to be parents. They want to be their kid's best friend. Their kid's best friend. And, and they don't want their child ever to say, I don't like you, or I hate you, or I don't love you. They never want to hear those words. And so, so they're, they're child's best friend. Consequently, there's no real correction. There's no real correction. We have timeout chairs. We have, you know, uh, we have don't do that again. Don't do that again. 
You know, I, years ago, we were in a church, and uh, this woman cleaned the church, and her kids were there with her, and they were running around, and they were just kids. You might call them naughty, but they were just kids. And, and she said to the one, if you do that again, I'm going to break your arm. He did it again. And she said, Pastor, I don't know what to do. He won't listen to me. And I said, I'll tell you what to do. She said, what is it? I said, the next time he does that, break his arm. Just break his arm. Oh, boy, I'm going to get in Facebook jail for that. Just break his arm. And she said, Pastor, I can't do that. I said, well, then stop threatening with him because he knows you won't do that. He knows the discipline you're threatening him with will never happen, so why should I stop doing it? You know, if you're going to discipline him, give him something that he knows he will get if he does it again. You know, if, if you do that again, I'm going to take a million dollars from you. Well, I don't have a million dollars to give. Well, then it's no big deal. Um, and, and, but here he says, withhold not correction. Withhold not correction. That is a key to being a parent. A key to bring up being a parent is train up your child in the way he should go. Training involves correction. That, that's true whether it's training a horse, a dog, a cat, or a child. It involves correction. It involves discipline. And, and then it says here, uh, from the child, for if thou beatest him. And that word beat there simply means to administer uh, some sort of physical bodily correction. And if that might mean just take a, take a stick, he says a rod, taking a rod and, and whack him a good one. And I would venture to say, if you're over the age of 60 or 70 here tonight, you remember your grandparents talking about being taken out behind the woodshed and I can remember people saying, I could go out in the woodshed, and I had to cut the switch and give it to my dad that he was going to spank me with. And, and um, it, it, it is, it, it's not talking about beating mercifully them, just beating on them, beating on them, beating on them, beating on them. It, it's not, that's not really what's conveyed there. It's just a matter of administering physical correction. And there are times when that is necessary. There are times when that is necessary. You know, um, I remember when we adopted the boys, even in foster care, we weren't allowed to spank them. We weren't allowed to spank them. And I told, I told our, I guess she's called a caseworker. I said, well, I'll tell you what. If I tell my son not to run out on the street, because he could get hit by a car, and he continues to run out onto the street, I'll tell you right now, I will spank him. And she said, well, oh. So, well, he's got to learn. I'd rather spank him than have him run over. Um, and and so, so, we, so he says that. And, and so, you know, uh, spare not the rod. Oh, but I love my child. I love my child. Well... You're still in Proverbs. I closed it. Let me go back to Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. I will get it here right now. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Verse 24. He that spareth the rod hateth his son. Oh, but I love him. I would never want to spank his little bottom. Well, I didn't say you had to bring welts. I didn't say you had to leave bruises. But he said, he that spares the rod hates his son, and he that loveth him chastiseth him betimes. At times. You know, it, it's... It's, it's, what, it's what we do. It's what we're called to do as parents, to give correction. And at times, that might mean a spanking. That might mean a spanking. 
Um, so what we have here in Colossians 21 is based in, not so much on, on the action, but it's based more on the guidelines, the guidelines, the rules, the rules. The Bible makes it clear, but the Bible makes it clear that, that parents, fathers, mothers, parents have the responsibility to carry out discipline, and that would include the use of a paddle, a switch, a wooden spoon. I remember one time in the Christian school, I was called upon to give a spanking, and I used a ping pong paddle. And I, I, he bent over the desk, and I went whack, <laughs> and the paddle broke, and the top went flying up across the air. I laughed, and he laughed. Um, but it, it was a very serious crime, and I had, and, and I, it called for that. Um, the, the fathers are commanded not to provoke their children to wrath. Yes, that's true. And no child, I guarantee this, no child um, will be happily, happy when they're disciplined. They, they just won't be. Uh, when they're told no and they're spanked, uh, the child isn't, is not going to be happy. And the child will, will react naturally. They'll be upset. They'll be maybe perhaps angry at you, mad at you. They may say something that's maybe even hurtful to you. I don't love you. But, but the, yeah, I understand the, the passage here in Colossians. You can go back to Colossians now. Uh, the pa this passage, what this passage is warning against is that wrath or that anger that's here. Uh, what he's talking about really is, is, is discipline that is inconsistent, uh, dis discipline that uh, doesn't fit the crime. Uh, so the child uh, doesn't eat his peas doesn't eat his Brussels sprouts. Uh, and so you take them out the back and you beat him senseless because he didn't eat his Brussels sprouts. Um, does the punishment fit the crime? Well, certainly not with Brussels sprouts. If you, if you got spanked for not eating Brussels sprouts, I'd have had a million spankings. Because I don't like Brussels sprouts. Never have, never will. Um, so so what, what, what you're, really what he's talking about here is, yes, there's discipline, but discipline has to be reasoned. Discipline has to be uh, just. Discipline has to be consistent. Uh, discipline has to um, fit the crime. Uh, and, and discipline, and, well, I said consistent. It can't be this one day and this the next day and this the next day. And, and so um, it has to be fair and across the board and, and it, has to, it has to be just. It has to be called for. And, and are there times when a spanking is called for? Yes. But are there more times when something's done that doesn't necessarily call for a spanking? Yes, um, and, and I would all offer all this as well. For the attitude of the spanker, it cannot be done in a spirit of, of anger on your part as well. Uh, a spirit of, uh, I'm going to get you. you know, uh, I'm going to teach you a lesson you need to learn. A spirit of anger, of fierceness. You know the old saying, this is going to hurt me more than it does you? And I know the kid will say, yeah, right. But you know, I've never known a parent who spanks his kid, his child, and feels good about it, brags about it. Ha! Let's do that again. I feel so good. You know, I think... I. I, don't, I think most parents, probably 99.9% .9 of parents, 
godly parents anyway, who are called upon to spank their children at some point inside are upset about it. Would you agree, Miss Susan? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, fathers are, are given an, an extremely delicate responsibility here. Delicate responsibility here. They must execute discipline, but they must not execute discipline to excess. Must not offer discipline to excess. It fits the crime, but, but what is given is, you know, we don't give the death sentence for someone who steals a pack of gum at the store. Doesn't fit the crime. Um, we have to make sure that the punishment that is administered fits the action that was done. The action that was done. And we have to make sure that it's done in a spirit of love, in a spirit of correction, um, a spirit of teaching, and not a spirit of retribution or... Um, Anger, fierceness. Fit, a discipline that doesn't fit the crime only aggravates the situation. It makes an already difficult situation worse. And it moves the children, the child, uh, to discouragement. Well, I tried. And I did what I was told to do and I got in trouble anyway. No, that's when they begin to get discouraged. Um, if they're doing what they're told, maybe they're not doing it exactly the way you would do it, but let them do it. Let them do it. You know, that another part of being a, a parent is allowing the kids maybe to fail sometimes. And again, parents aren't willing to do that today. They're not willing to do that. And yet that's part of training children to grow up to be adults in a real world where sometimes they will fail. Sometimes they will fail. And, and uh, giving kids participation trophies just because they show up for the Little League game is not teaching them anything. It's not teaching them a thing. It's teaching them that the older I get, I need to, no matter what I do, I'm going to be rewarded for it. I'm going to get something for it. And you know, in real life, you don't get that. You don't get that. And, and a part of being a parent is, is bringing our kids along and preparing them for what's out there. What's out there. And, and um, so sometimes they need, to, they need to fail. But just because they don't do it the way you did it or the way you thought it should be done um, isn't a call for isn't a, isn't a call, a call to action for discipline? Maybe you need to step in and give a little more guidance, and and help them a little bit. Uh, but that's when the kids cry out, "It's not fair! It's not fair! We want fair!" Uh, and and you know, fair is a as a fair is not always the best thing to think of. Uh, but what we have to do is make sure that the that the discipline does indeed fit the crime at hand. And like I said, number three, a couple of things here. Number three, it must be done in patience. Uh, discipline is not done, uh, it's not done uh, it, for, for revenge, it's done in love. Uh, fathers who are upset must remain cool and focused on the situation at hand and not fly off in rage or anger. One acting in rage is acting in the old man. It's acting in the flesh, and it's acting out of control. And certainly, certainly, certainly is not practicing Ephesians 6, 4, uh, where we are to uh, raise our children in the nurture and admonition of, of the Lord. Nurture, being careful, being gentle in our training, training them up, caring for them. 
uh, admonition, calling their attention to, and giving warnings to, and all of that, leading them to the Lord, leading them perhaps someday in, in the service of the Lord, not driving them away from the Lord. You, you know, you say, well, I, I love the Lord, and I love him, and oh, I just all that, and then you haul off, and you, you, you're dealing with your kids in rage and anger. What are you going to do? Are they going to grow up to serve the Lord? Or are they going to be discouraged and walk away as soon as they get the opportunity? Uh, we are to train up, or ch train up the child in the way he should go, the way he should go. We must, we must be careful and loving and gentle in our training, calling attention to, to the sin and its consequences, giving the child a concept of right and wrong, right and wrong according to the Lord, according to the word of God. And this can only be done in, in patience and in love. Uh, fathers have an awesome, awesome, awesome responsibility. Responsibility to train up their children, to discipline their children. It's our duty to point out right and wrong. It's our duty to point out these things. It's our duty to point our kids to the word of God. What does the word of God say? What does the word of God say? And, and, and that's all part of that training, all part of that nurturing, all part of that raising them up. And that's why our spirit as dads must be, must come out again as, as the Holy Spirit is within us. It must, it must come out in that. And, and that's not to say, I'm not sitting here today saying, I never had a problem. I always did it the right way. Um, I, I, I guess in all honesty, nowadays they don't say honesty, they say transparency. In all transparency, I probably made a lot of mistakes. I probably made a lot of mistakes. Um, I thank God that... Uh, That, that at least all of my kids know the Lord. Uh, and not that they're all serving him, but um, I don't think any of them are jailbirds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but that's our responsibility. That's our experience. Uh, as fathers, and, and I, we didn't get very far tonight, but you know, based on based on these wives, husbands, children, fathers, that's that's the home. That's that's the center of of our of the opportunity to to exemplify the body of Christ to our neighbors, to our co-workers. Uh, to, to the, our, our friends in, in our close world, that's our, that's our, as godly parents and as, as believers, that's our opportunity to shine as, as lights uh, for God in our, in our local community or in our workplace or wherever that might be, and even within our, the local assembly, the local assembly. And, and, and we, can, we can shine that way. Uh, we were we were went to a concert last night, and one of the fellows was talking, and his dad, his dad was a, a a pastor, but his dad was a weekend Christian. <laughs> he didn't put it exactly like that, but the, his dad would preach on Sunday and slam the pulpit on Sunday and don't do this, don't do that, don't do that, and Monday he was an alcoholic. Monday, he would beat his wife mercifully, mercilessly, mercilessly, and 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 uh, and the and the kids saw this, and 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 eventually, for all intents and purposes, broke up the family for many years until the father finally, I guess, actually got saved, and. 
and brought the family somewhat back together. But not before the, his sons had served time in prison. And the two men up here singing, last, up there singing last night, both of them, one of them had been a gang leader, and, and they both had been in prison. And it, was, it all grew out of their, of their childhood. It all grew out of their father, seeing their father, seeing the, the, the hypocrisy in their father, and, 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 and being discouraged, and moving away, and, and, and getting involved in the gangs there, and, and, and eventually getting in prison, serving their time and coming out. I think one of them actually found the Lord in prison, but both of them getting out, both of them in Christ now, both of them serving, uh, serving the Lord on the road with this singing group for 26 years now. Um, uh, both of them probably my age, maybe a little younger, but, but there. And, and serving the Lord. But all of that, all of that hardship because of a father who was not godly with them. Consistent, consistent with them. Consistent with them. And, and I just thought last night how that fits with where we would be tonight. Uh, in, in, in this, where it comes down to the fathers. Yes, we dealt with the husband, the husband in the home, the wife in the home, the husband and the, the marital relationship there, the children and what that means. But then coming back to the fathers as the head of the house and his responsibility to his children. His responsibility to the children. Yes, the, the wife would be in there, but operating under the, the authority of the husband, the father, the head of the home. And so I would speak to us fathers tonight that we need to make certain that our lives demonstrate Christ, that all we do in word or de de deed, we do in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to the Father uh, by him, by Christ, that that's our lives. And then from that, we deal with our children in, in a godly, loving, consistent manner. That would be true in our choice for discipline or our set of our standards, but in all of that, that all of that is, is, comes into the court, accord with the word of God, realizing, realizing those kids are ours and we have a responsibility to them, not only from one to 18, but we have a responsibility for the man and the woman they become to put them on a road to becoming that godly man, that godly wo woman, that godly husband, that godly father, that godly wife, that godly mother. We have a responsibility to that, and it's a responsibility we cannot take lightly. We cannot take lightly. All right, we're going to continue there next time. But until then, I, I want to stop and I want to just speak to you. Maybe you're here tonight for the first time. Maybe you're watching sometime other than tonight. I just want to share with you one thing, that we have a heavenly father, a heavenly father that loves you, a heavenly father that cares about you, a heavenly father that surrendered his own son, who willingly, willingly came into this world and took upon himself my sin, your sin. And he gave his life and died to pay for the price of that sin. So that through a free gift, you can have life and life everlasting. And it's yours tonight, not because you go to church. It's not a sacrament, a baptism. You know, it's none of these things. It's simply you putting your faith your trust, your belief, believing that Christ died for your sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day for you, for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 to 4. And when you put your faith and trust in that finished work of Christ, 
you are given life and life eternal. And it's yours simply in faith, believing, believing, in faith, believing, putting your, in, your entire belief system into Christ and that finished work that he did for you, believing he did it for you. And you put your faith and trust in that. You pass from death unto life. And you have life everlasting. And listen, if you make that choice tonight to put your faith and trust in Christ, I have a, a free gift I want to give you. So I get it up here. There it is. I want to give you this free gift. It's, it's a, what we call our new believers packet. It'll have a brand new Bible in it. And it'll have several little booklets to help you get started, first of all, with your walk with Christ. And then secondly, to help you understand the Word of God. People let, open the Bible and say, I don't understand. I don't know where to read. I don't know what to do. This literature will help you get started there. It'll help you in that. So I say read the literature and then start reading the Bible. But it'll be there for you. And it's absolutely pay, It's free. Postage is paid. You pay nothing for this. But all I need from you is a, 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 a letter stating that you've, you've made that decision to trust Christ. Give us your name and address, and it'll be there for you. Or you can just call that number and say, I've made the decision to trust Christ as a result of hearing your program, and I'd like that free, free New Believers packet. Give us your name and address. And it'll be on its way to you. No one's going to call you. No one's going to send you an email. No one's going to send you a letter and say, would you start giving us money? No, this is absolutely positively free to you. Free to you. Just simply, we want you to have it. But we want your name and address so we can pray for you and get that to you. So I encourage you, if you've made that decision to trust Christ, don't delay. Do that decision tonight and then let us know and we'd be happy, happy to send you this free gift. All right. Like I said, I'll be back tomorrow morning uh, for morning coffee with a bite of scripture, 930 Eastern time right here on the Facebook page live. Uh, other than that, have a great evening. Have a wonderful week. Be safe tomorrow. Be safe tomorrow on the holiday. And uh, above all things, as always, folks, always, always, always keep looking up. Good night, everybody.